Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to this second edition of uh, the Progress webinar. I guess we are all doing great today. I'm very happy that we've uh, made it to this session. Well, for those of you who have been here, especially during the first session, you have an idea of what it is. But if you were not part of the meeting edition, then I guess uh, I will just take a few seconds to explain the concept once again. So the Progress webinar is um, an online seminar initiative, which um, I, I thought about, you know, it's been in progress for a very long time. I, um, at some point, I thought it was necessary to, to kick off. So it's just about uh, bringing people together, um, especially people who have some skills which are kind of hidden, you know. Uh, many of us uh, traveled with a, a lot of skills. And when we got to wherever we find ourselves today, um, we kind of put those skills, those talents away because um, we needed to uh, to sing to sing the song of the day, which is work, 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 and pay bills. Um, I guess it's important to do so, but um, you also have God-given talents, God-given skills. God gave you those skills for a reason, and um, you just have to, you know, do well to explore and exploit these these skills find time to, to do that. It is very important. So um, we simply do this just so people can meet uh, each other so that you can get to know new people, new friends. We share our experiences and we tap from each other's experiences, you know, and like I mentioned in the first edition, we don't yet know where this is going to lead us to but I have a strong conviction that it's going to lead us somewhere, someday, somehow. So um, once again, thank you so much for, for joining us. Uh, thanks for your time. I know it's, it's not easy to uh, bring people together with very tight schedules, but if you've accepted to come uh, here, it's because you value this thing and together we are going to build it. This is the final, uh, final piece, uh, phase of the, of the project. We are still laying the groundwork and building, uh, you know, as time goes on. There are a lot of changes that will be made eventually, but these changes are not going to be made by me alone, but by all of us. So we just need to contribute our various ideas and see how we can grow this initiative. It is not mine, it is ours. So um, without much ado, we are going to begin by letting everyone quickly introduce themselves. Just take five to 10 seconds, just tell us who you are and probably the kind of skills you have. If you are a musician, tell us. If you are a good writer, tell us. If you are a fashion designer, we need to know. So we just do that real uh, fast, then we will move to the next stage, which will be listening to our two speakers of the day. This exercise is going to happen with the exception of our speakers of the day, because when they mount the rostrum, they will definitely uh, introduce themselves sufficiently. So um, without much ado, let us kick off. So um, I'll begin. My name is Ernest. I am a journalist by training. I went to the University of Boya. I see some of my very great classmates here on this platform, you'll get to know them eventually. Um, yes, I am a writer as well. I am very, very passionate in creating, creating projects. I think that is a gift from God. I, I virtually don't sleep at night because I'm, also, I'm always thinking of, of the, next, the next thing. So that's basically who I am. So once again, welcome. Let's quickly know ourselves. So who goes first? I'll go first. I'm right. fine. <laughs> you know, I am a relationship coach and a motivational speaker. 
Great. Next. I go second. All right. Okay. So I am Daniel Atamanto and I am an author. I'm a published author. I am the CEO and founder of Creative Dream Academy, where we help coaches, experts, and entrepreneurs to build a powerful brand online and to stand out as top notch leaders in their niche. So I have I am a practice digital marketer and a social media expert, and I am presently in Cameroon. Thank Beautiful. Thank you so much, Daniela. Mm -hmm. Next. Okay, I'll go. Um, <clears throat> I know I'm, uh, <laughs> I'm behind the scenes, so for now, my name is Fevo Grace. I am um, a gospel artist, and I'm a nurse. Um, uh, my book is coming out soon, by the grace of God, and I already have like music out there, you know, songs. A video uh, already. I'm a YouTuber, but not really fully functional. So, um, what else? <laughs> I don't Thank know. You. NS, can you remind, <laughs> can you remind you. me? So, well, as, as time goes on, we'll get to know you. Yeah, so <laughs> that's it for now. Um, for right now, I'm behind the scenes because I'm really busy doing some things, but I'll show up a little, in a little bit. So, thank you all so much. And I'm glad to meet a lot of um, people here. Faces already know Daniela and all. So <laughs> I'm so blessed to be here. Thank you, yeah. Ennis. All right, great. Here. Next. I see Roderick. All right, who goes next? I'm going to go, Ennis. This is Leah. Uh, okay. I'm I'm not going to have the mic, uh, the camera on. I'm still at work. Just going to do this quickly. My name is Leah. Also, um, actually, Irene Asanji, also known as Leah. I'm uh, based in Canada, Toronto. I'm uh, a published author of uh, two books. My most recent book is uh, uh, just re released last year, still to be officially launched because of COVID-19 restrictions. I have two gospel um, albums out as well. So I'm a gospel minister. And uh, um, I also uh, presently have a, a business that is yet to be fully developed. Um, it's uh, known as a Talk to Leah. Um, talk to Leah. Talk to Leah services. And what I do is it's a combination of all my uh, God given gifts uh, that I put together and package uh, in a way that I can make the world a better place. Um, including that is writing. I do uh, writing, editing, um, also write uh, song lyrics, uh, also write um, stories for movie script ideas. So these are some of the freelance activities that I do on the side uh, while uh, taking care of two kids as a single mom and uh, also um, uh, taking, having uh, two jobs. <laughs> Interestingly, yes, I do two jobs. So I'm actually at my second job right now. I work as an inside sales uh, rep um, right here in Toronto. So um, by the grace of God, um, everything is going well. I hope for better days um, in my ministry as well as in my career. Thank you for the opportunity. Beautiful. Leah and I were the first uh, uh, batch of students who got into the Department of Journalism and Mass Communication in the University of Boya. Thank you so much, Leah. Next. Yeah, good evening. Yes, good evening. Can you hear me? Yeah, we can hear you five and five. Okay. Okay, uh, my name is Lukon Kiven. I am a trained journalist and uh, I'm passionate about event management, marketing, and PR. I am uh, currently in Cameroon, and uh, I do events and uh, marketing with PR for uh, corporate and entertainment structure. I work a lot with musicians and with talents here in Cameroon, but uh, clearly my passion is all on uh, event management and uh, marketing. Thank you. Thank you so much, George. Who is next? Okay, so um, maybe we will uh, get to know other people as time goes on. So um, we will just write on. 
some housekeeping rules before we continue. Um, when, when you are not talking, we would crave your indulgence to, to, to mute yourself. Then whenever you have to speak, you can unmute yourself. We have a chat option here as well. So you may also want to communicate uh, using that option. Then um, when it's time for the Q&A session, uh, you, you will just have to raise your hand if you want to speak. You can do that either digitally or manually. If you raise your hand like this, I'll definitely see you if you're on camera. But um, if you're not on camera, then uh, that icon will indicate to me, then I will usher you in to speak. So today we have two speakers, just like in the last edition. Uh, speaker number one is um, a business coach. She is a career management expert. Uh, she's a philanthropist, yet she is a, a recording artist, a very talented musician with scores of, uh, of tracks, which you, 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 you will get to come across eventually. Um, Constance B resides in, in Canada. Um, her stage name is Missy BK. She's done quite a lot. She runs a foundation as well. Uh, she's made so many charity trips, especially to, to Cameroon over, over the years. So she's our very first speaker today. Um, when she's done, we'll have speaker number two, Mbole Kani who is uh, a member of uh, Corporate America, but who has an inseparable passion with arts, culture, and entertainment. She runs one of the leading blocks, The Hot Gem, which has been around for, for quite some time. And uh, Mbole is also a resource person to many media out, out, out uh, platforms. So you will get to listen to her own story as well. So without much ado, we will begin with our sp first speaker of the day. But before Missy BK, um, one and a half minutes of what she has done so far. Okay, so I guess we all watch that. That is um, um, just one of the tracks which our main speaker today, our, 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 um, one of our speakers today, you know, she did this track a couple of years ago. Like I said, she, she has many other songs to her credit. Well, um, we are going to start by listening to the first speaker, Constance B. AKA Missy BK. Constance, if you are ready, then this course of people who have gathered here today are ready to listen to your story. Then um, we will follow up with the questions when you are done. So Constance, 10 minutes, over to you. Thank you so much, big brother. As you have all heard, my name is Constance B. Kemal, um, also known by the stage name Missy BK. Um, I'm just going to dive in on how I started this journey. I think my big brother told you all that I'm a singer, songwriter. 
I'm a business and career consultant. And also I'm very, very passionate about um, helping people, especially back in my home country, Cameroon. So um, I own a foundation called the Misi Biki Foundation. So how did I start um, in the music career, my, my music career? Uh, well, when I was still a young girl growing up, I used music as a source of, uh, it's, music was like my hiding place. Um, you know, after my mom and my dad separated, I had to deal with the divorce at a very young age. So I used to sing to comfort myself. So when I went to primary school, one of my teachers discovered I could sing and introduced me to um, the children's choir. From there, when I went to secondary school, it was still the same thing. So when I, I actually got involved in a girl group called the Cherubic Queens at that time, that's when I wrote my first song. And then when I got to the university, uh, I started receiving calls to sing so that I could be paid. So I started making some money from there. And after I made some money that I could even pay my fees, I was like, oh, it seems as if this thing is not just like singing for fun. It seems it could give me money. So at that point, I told myself, you know what? Since I'm also training myself to go into music writing, I might as well just dive into the music industry. So a few years later, after I wrote some songs, I decided to, you know, hop into the studio. I was so excited. I recorded a few songs and I released my first song that was uh, almost six, seven years back was uh, Set Me Free. That was the first ever song that I did. I was so excited. That was a huge accomplishment for me as someone that, you know, you just used to sing in places. I didn't know that I could actually accomplish that. So when I came into the music industry, the welcome was great. Uh, the feedback was amazing. But I can tell you that it also came with a lot of things that I could have done better because I realized that I skipped many steps as I was going into the music, into the music industry. There were things that I got to do all by myself. For example, I got to, you know, release the song, I go to the studio. I tried to do the marketing all by myself at that time because I didn't have like a recording company, which I skipped the most important steps. And uh, to discuss with you all today concerning my music career, I've won many awards. I've won many awards internationally uh, with the music. I have uh, collaborated with pe people that you know uh, I consider them my mentors, and to me that was a huge achievement for me. But if I could go back to do things right, because I have just ten minutes, so I just have to cut everything short. If I had to go back to do things right, I would have definitely treated my music career from the beginning as a business. I, what do I mean by treating my music career as a business? You know, when you are going in or starting a business, you need to be able to have a business plan. You need to be able to be competitive. You're, you're not just going in there for fun. If you're just going in there for fun, you know, like, okay, uh, I'm gonna do everything all by myself. You can't handle it all. So at that point, I didn't understand the concept of licensing, publishing, all those things were not on my table. So if I could go back to do it, I, I would have treated my music career at the time as a business. And the second thing I could have done right was to build a team. And that's what I'm doing right now, because it's very important. If you want to go far in music, it's really necessary for you to have a team on the side. You know, um, the mu music takes a lot. For example, it's not just about recording, shooting a music video. No, there's a whole lot, in, I mean, included into it. For example, the marketing part, the, the, the public relations part, event management part. So let's take, for example, you're just one person trying to run all of this. It's not going to go well down the road. So if, uh, you know, as time is going on and I'm learning a lot about it, I'm realizing that this is the best way to go about it which I'm thinking is actually working well, because sometimes you have to step back to let other people take the load for you. Another thing that I'm, you know, I, I'm learning and I learned back then was actually to build an online home. 
you know, sometimes you need to ask yourself as a musician is, who are those that you're singing for? You know, who are those that are interested in my art? Because sometimes, you know, when I just started at that time, I just released the song. I didn't really know. I was still excited. You know, you know, you go with the trend, you just release whatever song you have on your mind and you go with it. But what I realized was that you need to be able to know your niche. Who, what kind of story are you, are you talking about? Who are you talking to? So these are the few things that I learned that I, I if in building uh, an online home, it's just like you having, choose one or two that you know that could be good for you. For example, Instagram, or Facebook, don't be everywhere. You, I mean, your, your customers might not be everywhere. So uh, the one thing I learned is that you, you have to choose a particular niche where you know that there'll be those people that are waiting for you to appreciate your art. And I also learned along the way that you have to define your unique selling points. Uh, what, how can I say it concerning music? When I talk about the unique selling points in music is it's not just about you heard somebody's doing could see and then you go and jump and start doing could see and then you without even asking yourself am i good in this or you heard that oh hip hop is selling and then you pop into it and then you know you're jumping into it once you need to start asking yourself what am i good at it's not just what you're good at for example i realized I'm a, I'm a good vocalist. I, that's one thing that I, I did realize from the start. And I realized that, you know what? I'm not really good at dancing or jumping in the air. So I'm pretty much a mellow type of, you know, a singer. I'm good with um, storytelling. I love storytelling in my songs. I, I, I love when I'm able to explain a story in a song, like tell a story about what happened because I believe people will relate to that. I might touch certain lives based on the story that I'm trying to say that have impacted some lives, you know, out there. And more to that, um, not only that, you also have to see if your unique selling points are what is selling in your area. I might like to sing Zook, but what if I'm living in an environment where the people in that area don't even like Zook, how am I gonna sell? So these are also the things that, you know, as a musician, you have to consider maybe what you're trying to sell it's not sellable in the area where you are. So maybe you have to move to a, a better environment that you know, you'll be able to sell your art. Or maybe you try now to convince people that this thing is actually good and you, know, you can buy it. Another thing I learned in my career is that as a singer, songwriter, um, you know, it's not just about singing and songwriting. There's a lot to do. There are different ways that you can make money when it comes to uh, the music business. If you see that the singing and the songwriting is not giving you a lot of money, you can diversify your, your, your music career by you know, opting to go for singing in movies, you know, like a soundtrack, or you can even start a YouTube channel, which can bring you some passive income. And you can also you know, um, sing in, uh, um, start a class, you know, or do like consulting in music. If you have certain ideas on how to help other people excel in the music industry. So it's not just about focusing on, you can even write songs for other people. Sometimes we're stingy, you know, when you write a good song, sometimes you can write a good song that doesn't match your, song, your voice or your voice tonality or stuff like that with which you can actually sell that song to another person to sing it, you know? And if you do that, you can make money and earn royalties from there. So uh, it was very important for me at that time when I started realizing that I made a lot of mistakes that I had to start learning about music licensing, which comes with what I just explained, you know, singing in a movie like a soundtrack or and stuff like that with which they pay you for what you're doing and also music publishing. Some people only depend on shows and um uh, most artists that depend on shows and um, uh, CD sellings, but if you put your songs on YouTube, uh, Spotify, they, you 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 get paid at the same time. So these are all those things that um, are very important as an artist. You know, going into the industry, uh, we need to know. So that's pretty much a summary of um, my singing. Uh, on the other side, I said I'm a business coach. Hopefully, I'm still on time. Sure, go right ahead. 
All right. So concerning uh, the business side, my how I went into um, career consulting or business career and business consulting is actually I stepped back from music back in 2016 because I had to uh, reinvent, you know, oh, you had to I had to reinvent my career, you know, and expand into different areas because I started asking myself, um, apart from music, what can I do? What else, what other problems can I solve in the community that can create an impact in what I'm doing? Before even going to the career and business consult, uh, consulting, I've always been an active person when it comes to philanthropy. And uh, I started off with business. The, 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 the thing that caught my attention was when I started helping women back home. I, I usually, when the schools are studying, I, I select a school and then they buy books, pens, pencils for at least 50 to 100 kids every year. And then when I started doing that, some of the parents will contact me and, and suggest, you know, if there's another way for you to help us because that actually helped my child for this year. I wish there were other ways for you to help us like single mothers and stuff. So when I started hearing all those concerns, I discussed with my partners back at home and then we started, we, we launched a business um, program uh, helping single mothers or uh, orphans that have outgrown uh, to, to start their businesses by helping them to learn uh, the vocational trade, like learning how to make omo, learning how to bake a cake, learning how to bake bread and all those things. And after they finish learning the program, and then we give them a uh, small startup capital to go ahead and do it. But later I realized that most times when they start those businesses, they don't really have much information concerning how to run it. For example, having a good business plan. How are you going to go about it? How are you going to make money off this business? What's the next plan? And also, I also realized they didn't have a lot of knowledge concerning customer service. This were most of the things that actually made me to start asking myself, what can I do? Because these are problems that you know you, you notice. Even me, when I started off my business, these, are the problem, these were the problems that I noticed that a lot of startup business you know, entrepreneurs, they face. So I asked myself, what can I do about this? Now that I'm starting to recognize these problems and a lot of people don't have the solutions, maybe it's a good time for me to go back to school and actually get to understand exactly how to go about the business consulting in, in career. So I went back to school, I did uh, took some classes and I graduated with an international business consulting certificate here in Canada. And that's when I decided to start helping, you know, small businesses, helping them to know exactly how to go about the, the um, business management, you know, like the business plans, the marketing plans. And also, I also help be, uh, small business owners connect them with experienced business owners because to be able to do like business uh, counseling or consulting it's always good when people that have excelled in business give you know the younger ones who are growing in this business you know pertinent ideas so that's exactly what I do I put those people together um, uh, for them to grow their businesses successfully and when it comes to career consulting how did I get into it as well when I was doing my human resources diploma, I was actually pushed and sent to help with uh, hiring in a company. So when I got to this company, uh, we were given a task to interview, you know, people when they come in, you know, to look for jobs. So most of the time, a lot of individuals that came in with their CVs, the CVs were excellent, well-written. But when they got there, when they sat down and when they started asking them questions, what they said was not linked to what was written on the CV. It seems as if they just went on Google, collected maybe samples from Google, copy and paste, and come into the interview room, and, and they're blank. You ask them a question, they don't know exactly how to connect who they are with the job. They don't, most of them didn't even understand what the, the position is all about. They just, it's just like they had one CV and they were sending around everywhere. And we had a scenario where the same company had advertised for two jobs. There was this one candidate that took one CV and sent to these two positions. 
And we were asking ourselves, how does this work? You cannot send one CV to two jobs. And these are two different titles. This is the beginning of you failing. And most of the time, what caught my attention to actually focus on career management was that when they usually come in and they ask them a few questions, they answer, they let them go. And usually they just call you and say, unfortunately, you didn't make it. Ironically, this individual stay not even knowing exactly what they did wrong. How can we fix it? What did I do wrong? How can I change it? So when I started asking myself, if we as the people interviewing don't tell these individuals exactly what is wrong with them, how will they know what they have to change? How will they know the mistakes they're making? Which this is exactly what pushed me. I wanted to focus more on the business side of it. I was like, no, there are a lot, there are a lot far more people struggling out there, jobless, who have the right qualifications, but they don't know exactly how to use their qualifications to connect to jobs that are out there. They don't know exactly how to, to use their talents to connect to companies that are hiring. So I found, like, I found it like a need. I have to do this. So I focus more of my attention trying to investigate to people looking for jobs. Why do you think you don't have a job? And after I came up with a lot of answers, I realized there needs to be solutions put in place to actually help people in career consulting. So this is how I got into these three domains from the music to the business consulting into the career management. What a beautiful and inspiring story. Thank you so much, Constance B. Thank you um, for sharing, you know, your story, it's a wonderful yeah. one. I, I learned two things. Um, how do you, um, how do you put up two, the same CV for two jobs, the same CV for, for, for two jobs with different requirements. That is strange. Again, um, music should be, looked uh, at from the perspective of business, build up a team and, and you know, get the business part of it, you know, uh, uh, working. I, I learned those, those two things, but I will not monopolize uh, talking here. I will now throw the ball at everyone, every one of you, if there is anybody who has a question, who just listen to her, um, you can just indicate, then I will give you the floor. You go ahead and ask your questions. We'll do that for a few minutes, then we will hit our second speaker. Daniel has a question from Douala. Daniel, over to you. Yeah, thank you very much, uh, Mr. Ennis. Thank you, everyone. I really got a lot of inspiration listening to your story because I actually am someone that likes sharing my story because I know the power of sharing a story. You know, you can just transform someone's life by sharing your story. You know, when you were sharing your story right from the beginning, I could identify with you on various aspects. For example, I actually launched my startup company like um, basically six to seven months ago. and. Uh, I have really gone through all the challenges, <laughs> some great challenges. And most of the things that you kept on listing, like if this is what I would have, you know, I could, if I could tell myself, you know, some few years back when I started with this business, I would have done this, you know, I could really see myself. And it's actually now that I started really understanding and, you know, trying to uh, become, you know, that perfect leader because as, um, as a founder and the CEO of my company, I actually am learning, you know, I'm still at that startup phase. And uh, when I started, I was struggling with two things. And, um, you know, I, I was struggling with time management. I was struggling with meeting, you know, um, you know, meeting the, the you know, deadlines deadlines I was struggling with that and um, I really I really also understood that most of the time we could not I cannot manage everything by myself and I, I you mentioned the fact that you know you need to build a team and um, and you need to build a team and that's actually what I understood like you cannot do everything by yourself 
even if you're starting, you need a team. And by the way, um, I read somewhere that you cannot call yourself a great leader if you have no one that is following you. So actually what I've been doing so far is that I've really been reading books and, and um, well, if I could also tell myself some few uh, uh, you know, years back in my childhood is, um, you know, if, if there's one thing that I wish I could have, like few years back, it was I wish I could have a mentor that could train me through. And I will always say everybody, to everybody that having a mentor is just the best way if you want to make it, because actually we are facing the same challenges that they face and the other thing. So, well, I'm excited to learn from someone like you and... Uh, um, you know, I'm always excited to be in a means of people like this. And for me, the fastest way I've been learning has been through books. I've read books and I'm always operating. So I'm actually very learning so many things. And thank you for sharing. And so yeah, I actually have a question. Yes. Yeah, I actually have a question. I know you have said. Okay, go ahead. Over. Just one question, Danielle. <laughs> yeah, I, I know you have said a whole lot. So what is, uh, what is one, like, one piece of advice you can give someone that is in Cameroon and that's trying to build up a business because we always feel like we are limited the, by the fact that we are in Cameroon and we cannot make it, you know, you know what all, some of these youths, we are telling ourselves that it's only possible when we are, for example, we live in this Western country. So what is one piece of advice you can give to any youth that wants to make it and feel like you know where he is is a threat. So what can you really give me as a piece of advice? That's a very good question. And before I dive into your your the answer for this one, I will mention something concerning your time management and building a team. Uh, yeah. I know sometimes when you hear of building a team. Mostly it could be overwhelming because of the finances. You know, you're asking yourself, how will I pay these people long term? But there's actually what we call freelancing. You know, you, you pay on hire, you understand. Let's take, for example, if you have a project, you get to charge the people hiring you based on the people you can hire to work, you know, to accomplish this job. So let's take, for example, if you, you're an event manager and you need a designer, yeah. You don't need to keep that designer long term. You can hire that person just for that project, right? You can build up each project. You can build a team. And after that project, you let them go. They just need to understand that I will, I will have you just for this project. But if there's any other project, I will call you back. That's how you can build a temporary team. Okay. Yeah. So right now, let's go back to the main question that you asked. I always, I even tell my younger ones back home, everybody is interested in starting a business. Like everyone wants to start a business. Sure. The first thing I tell everyone is whether you're in Canada, USA, Cameroon, it's the same thing. You cannot just start a business without knowing exactly what problem you're trying to solve. Ask, it's not about starting a business. Ask yourself first, what problem can I solve? What problems are out there? Look in the community and ask yourself, what, what are the people suffering from? Where is the need? Identify problems in your community, list them down on a piece of paper. You understand? Once you list all those problems down in a piece of paper, because once you start to understand, it's just like you have headache, you have stomach ache. Where do you go to? You go to see a doctor, right? A doctor, yeah because you know the doctor has got solutions for that problem. Exactly. Start to think in that mindset and tell everyone, you know what, you can't start a business, but you cannot just start a business because you want to make money. You should start a business because you want to offer solutions to a mass or a community who are suffering from a particular problem. Mm -hmm. And once you find a problem, ask yourself, where can I find those people having this problem? What area, what town, what city? Once you know where you can find those people, that's where you start to build your customer base. You don't start a business by building a website first or by creating an Instagram and making some logos. No, it doesn't work like that. Once you have a problem, then find solutions. When you have the solutions right now, yeah. test them 
test to see if those solutions are working. Once they start working and you start getting feedback that it's working, then you're set to go. Okay. We had that you don't just start a business because you want to make money. You should be doing so because um, you want to be a solution to a problem. Okay, um, we've, we've gotten that. Um, I guess we'll have uh, just um, one more question for her, then we move to our next speaker. Um, Slim McAnnell in Douala, I see your hand raised. Over to you. Okay, thank you, uh, Ernest. Uh, I really want to say big kudos to the speaker. Your, what the Frenchman calls the parkour is really inspiring. Thank you. You have elaborately and in all details elucidated what you have gone through and the importance of learning, which is the most essential essential prerequisites when you want to get involved in any venture, be it business, be it whatever that you want to get yourself into, get yourself into. Whether it is formal or informal, there is a place of learning in anything. And your experience has taught you that. First of all, what I want to ask, I want to really uh, like add to what, what uh, she just said is, uh, business is business. Every day in our daily lives, everybody buys and everybody sells. Be it music, be it in commodities, be it in trade, be it in, be it in virtual, whatever. In our everyday business, even in our social lives, we buy and we sell every day. Now, to succeed in business, the way you have succeeded is for us to understand that we don't concentrate on the components of business. Like say, okay, marketing as a component, we concentrate on that. Business requires a lot of market intelligence that can be done by what you just mentioned in your red expose. You have to know much about the competition. You have to know much about how to penetrate the market. We talk now about the commercialization process. I'm talking about your music experience. First of all, what is the conception? Before you start tying the conception to what the people will need and the context in which you operate. So the feedback is not only about consuming, but receiving the feedback, whether it's good, whether it's accepted or not. Now, the second thing you talked about is your life as a business, business person. Now, the commercialization process entails a lot of processes like, okay, now the, the, the goods or the services that I'm providing, who really is going to consume it or adhere, adopt or adapt to what I'm proposing, that you also did well. You have to understand one thing about getting involved in business. As you rightly said, it's about giving solutions. Now, what if the business itself it has a problem. Because the thing is, we just do things without really having the right consideration about the things. We just do maybe because we are motivated. We just do because maybe we have the finances that can ease us setting up the investment and then think that, okay, now, once we have invested, let's make the business known. Personal contacts, referrals, have come to make us to know that that is one of the greatest ways of succeeding in business. It's better to talk to five people whom you know three can adhere to your business than making an advert to 1,000 people who will simply react to your business. We have failed in business today because we think that having the finances and making the business known are the prerequisites for success in business. Meanwhile, they are the failures. That is why in a marketplace, in a market, there are businesses that fail. But the market is a place to go and buy and sell. Just because people don't think about branding. They don't think about visibility. They don't think about quality. They don't think about distribution. They don't think about promotion. They don't think about persuasion. They don't think about even price, which is the least of the things. So when we do business, when we do music, when we do whatever we are doing, let us try to look at the light of this is business. 
Even me or any man want to go and woo a woman, you change strategies. What worked yesterday must not work today. You always try as much as upgrading. Now, my question I have for you is, what has been the greatest challenge that you had in synergizing these three things to make what you are today? Great. So um, Missy will answer that question in just one minute. Then um, we'll probably give um, room for maybe the very last question. Then we'll move to the next speaker. Over to you, Missy. Okay. All right. So the greatest challenge I can tell you was, first of all, understanding what was lacking. If you don't understand exactly what is lacking, you can never find a solution. That's the, that's the biggest challenge. Uh, sometimes you are thinking, for example, let me just say young artists, okay? For example, you get into the industry, you make one song, you know, it's, it's, you know people, are, people, are, you, people are liking it, and then you're thinking, I've made it. And then now you don't want to learn anything anymore. You're like, you know what? I don't care what anybody's saying. I don't care what you're saying. I've made it. No, the, your, your journey is just starting. And for you to be able to know exactly uh, your most, you know, the, the main thing to look for is actually your customer base, like you mentioned, right? The, that was the biggest challenge, asking myself where they are. Because if you go ahead, just like you say, advertising to masses, let's say you just throw money out there without actually knowing if your clients are there, you're wasting money, you're wasting your time. So the first challenge was to actually figure out who are listening to me? Who are those who actually like sincerely love my art? That's the first thing. Once you start to understand who are those that love your art, it makes everything easy. It makes your marketing easy because even if you want to synchronize you know the niche to advertise just to this particular pe people it makes it easier for you if you want to go for event management to know exactly who to contact you already know who to contact so the first thing is actually knowing what product am i selling who are those i'm selling to once you understand these two steps it will help it's like it connects the dots for all the other things thank you so much uh, missy bk for for that response, uh, thank you so much. Let's see if we have one last question for her. If not, I guess uh, we'll move to the next speaker. Um, Hello, Ernest. Yes, last question. Zita, over to you. Yeah, I had indicated earlier in the chat that I had a question for her. Okay, Zita, go right ahead. Okay, um, thank you very much, Constance, for that very great presentation. My name is Zita Tangwa. I am a special needs educator with the Calgary Catholic School Board. Um, and I am also the author of the book, Unwrapping the Gift. Um, I liked when we talked about a startup package, like when you're doing your philanthropy. So I'm more into philanthropy than business. Um, I, I am actually providing breakfast to the students of a special needs school in Bambili from the proceeds of my book. And that has been for a year. So um, now two students from the school are graduating and I'm in the process of raising funds to start up a business for them. And you raised something that really touched me because I hadn't thought about a business plan for them. Yes, we can do a startup and how do they run this business to make it sustainable for them? So it's something that we can discuss afterwards. I just want to uh, comment, uh, comment about that and to also say your presentation was very good. I got to learn a lot from it and I hope we can connect after this. Thank you very much. You're welcome. I'm also going to mention something very small. We will soon start a project in Cameroon uh, to start training again, uh, young women. I'm really, really focused on young women, single mothers, orphans. I'm really going for this mass. And we, first of all, train them to know a trade. And then we give them six weeks of small business management. And this six weeks of small business management class, it's all free. They are not paying. 
the fees anything. It involves them learning customer service, them learning exactly how to manage a business, them learning exactly how to have a business mindset. All this is very important. And also how to manage a business in the time of crisis because a business can easily fail if you're faced with tough crisis and you don't know exactly what to do. And we, in this class, we are also going to teach them exactly how to save for rainy days. We are going to teach them exactly how to ask those questions, what ifs? Because I always tell each business person, ask all the what if this happens, what will you do? Make sure you write down all the solutions of all your what ifs so that in case it's happening in the future, you know that you pre-prepared yourself for all the what ifs. So if it's something that you know, like you're already doing, I'll, it will be a pleasure for me to connect with you after this and then we'll talk more about that. Beautiful, develop a great business mindset. And if you are setting up a business, it shouldn't just be because you want to make money. It should also be um, based on the fact that you want to solve a problem. Then go ahead and set all the what ifs and uh, tie those loopholes so that in the event of any crisis like the one we're facing, you should be able to, to sail, sail through. Missy BK, I want to thank you so much. You uh, wear so many caps, yet you have a mastery of everything you do. And I guess um, participants in this seminar have um, benefited quite much. It's been a very enriching uh, uh, presentation. Uh, thank you once again. And down the road, uh, don't be surprised, you may be invited to, to be a speaker once again because, because you're... you know you know i'm always anytime you call me i answer you know that thank so, you so much is... everyone thank you for the for sure for yeah for right so missy bk you will stay with us you're not going away yet Absolutely. time for us to introduce our next speaker more kind of like i mentioned earlier on is um is she's a household name uh she's done quite a lot especially in the area of uh, arts culture and entertainment promotion she, she runs a, uh, one of the leading entertainment blogs. She's a media executive. She is in corporate America as well. She has, I mean, um, she, she, she's the first to reckon with, but I, I, I wouldn't tell her story better than, than her. So at this point, I will invite Mbole Ikane. I hope she's here to uh, get to the restroom. I, Mr. Ennis, tell her story. Please, can I just ask a quick question? I'm sorry to interrupt. So um, I think I'll be leaving soon. Please, I wanted to find out, is Miss Missy going to give uh, or leave like her info so we can contact her later on and all? I mean, I know I've not really interacted much, so I really want to. Absolutely. Absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. Right. I'll leave my contact information and Big okay. Brother can share to all of you. All right. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm. You're welcome. Okay, thank you for that. So I guess Mbole is ready. Mbole, if you are, then over to you. Hi, Ernest, can you hear me? I can hear you five on five. Okay, yes, I, I've been listening. And um, like everybody else, I'm very amazed at the amount of stuff that <laughs> Missy BK is doing in her life and everything. That's amazing. And she actually made it a bit easier for me to start because basically everything that I'm doing in a different area is a little bit connected to what she's doing and kind of has a bit of that background from a business perspective. But before I get into that, thank you very much for having me. Um, to everyone else, my name is Bole Ikane. I'm based in Texas. Um, I used to live in the East Coast for many, many years. I just moved to Texas last year. Um, I'm, I'm also the founder of a, a, I guess people will call it a blog. I prefer to call it a media outlet because we have so many other sections involved in it. And it's called The Hot Gem. I'm also the founder of The Hot Gem um, Media, which is a registered business in the U.S. And it's also being registered as we speak in Cameroon. Um, so I think I'll just kind of give you an overview and I won't keep you all too long. Um, so um, my background is I have a double master's in pharmaceutical management and another master's in healthcare system. Um, and um, um, not in addition to that, I've been working in the biotech and pharmaceutical industry for about 10, 11 years now. Um, one of the things that I love about the 
by uh, the pharmaceutical industry is that it gives you so many opportunities to work with scientists as well as with people from an operational background in order for you to help to develop drugs. And for me, it's a very, very interesting field because when I came in here, I didn't know, I really didn't know more than two Cameroonians that were working in the pharmaceutical industry. And so I worked my way up and I got to a level where I'm very proud of myself because I had to prove myself not only as a female, but as a black woman and an African and always the only black person in every department that I worked in to the point to where I get, I got to, you know, my position now. Now that's my corporate side of it. Now going to my passionate side of it, I actually run a blog called The Hot Gem. It's a pop culture and trends blog. And I started blogging originally in 2011. I put it on the side and came back to it again, full swing in 2013. We now have a team of eight people. Um, we have an operations manager, a country manager, content writer. We have a graphic designer. We also have a lawyer because sometimes you need a lawyer to draft some of your contracts when you're working with, um, you know, with clients. And this is where it gets a little bit tricky. Um, so I run the Hot Gem, which is a blog of its own, and I also run the Hot Gem Media, which is actually a business, which is known as a media outlet um, in terms of we work with a lot of people in the entertainment industry. I've worked with so many people um, in the music industry in Cameroon. A lot of people don't even know the people that we've worked with because we don't really talk about it a lot online. We also have worked with some businesses in and outside of Cameroon. And what they basically use us for is to do a lot of um, some of their PR work. Like we organize media tours. If you want to go to Cameroon and have a full blown media tour on radio and TV, we will be the hook you can come to. We have a lot of contacts in those areas um, in different cities. We also work with, um, with, distributors who can put out your music on the street they will play them in clubs radio they'll also play them in the on the streets on you know they'll put them in little stands and if you have cds or usbs that you want to sell with your music then we can reach out to our people and they'll do that so we work very closely with a lot of people in the entertainment industry now what inspired me to get into blogging to begin with so um not many people who don't know me personally know I was born in Canada. I grew up in New York City. I moved to Cameroon right before I was 13. And then I, I went to school in Cameroon for a while. Then I left Cameroon and came to Canada and went back to the US. So I spent literally 80% of my life abroad outside of um, Cameroon. However, when I moved to the United States, of course, because I spent some years in Cameroon, my, you know, my perception of Africa became different than before I moved to Cameroon. And one of the things that bothered me the most is when I was growing up, like maybe when I was going to college, I had so many Nigerian friends because, you know, Nigerians are the ones that, you know, they're the most, they're so populated everywhere they go, they dominate all the African sectors. And one of the things that I noticed was that I knew so much about everything going on in Nigeria in terms of like their entertainment, you know, in college, you're really more about the music, the movies and all that. And I didn't even have to try. I just happened to just know what was going on in their pop culture arena. I knew their actors, their musicians, and I even knew a little bit about the politics, but I knew nothing about Cameroon. And it was a bit embarrassing because there was a time that I went for a party and they played a song which was not even a Cameroonian. And somebody said, oh, who's playing that song? And I think somebody else said, oh, it's a Cameroonian artist. You know, Cameroonians speak French. And they asked me, oh, Bola, do you know this artist? The person is from Cameroon. And I didn't even know if that person was a Cameroonian or not. And that kind of made me think to myself that, wow, you know, I think even from a perspective of living out of Cameroon, you need to be able to also connect to your country. You can't always be knowing everything going on about other people's countries. So in my mind, it bothered me, but I didn't do anything about it. So fast forward, um, one day I was on Bella Nigeria. That this was so many years ago when Bella Nigeria kind of almost started. I had already been knowing about them and we were reading stories about them. And an idea came to me and I said, hmm, it would be so interesting if we had like a blog that talked about music and entertainment, because when I went on Google, most of the blogs that popped up at the time were 
political blogs. And one of the bloggers, I knew them personally because he's a friend of my older cousin. His name is Dibusi Tande. He was one of like those prominent Cameroonian bloggers. And I used to read a lot of his articles to find out what was going on in Cameroon in general. Like he used to talk about politics, but he also liked to write. He was a writer. And for me, I felt like I didn't want to be too involved in the politics of Cameroon. I wanted to know about the pop culture, things that people my age would want to know about. And that's where I actually started doing my investigation to find out about how the industry was like, who are the players in the industry? Who are the people who are doing music? I mean, who are our top stars besides the Ndedi Yangos that my parents knew, the Petit Pays? Like, there had to be a younger generation that was out there putting music and just even doing movies or doing anything that was entertaining. And that's basically how I decided to start the Hot Gem because I started looking online and then. Ernest Kanja at the time, um, he had his blog called Tip Top Stars. And I think you were actually one of the earlier people that really started talking about entertainment. I stumbled onto his blog and just a handful of other blogs that were talking about entertainment, but there were not many that were doing it on a regular basis. And even if they were, they were not promoting it. So that's basically how I got into blogging. Now, when I started getting really heavy into it around 2013 into 2014, as um, Miss, Missy BK had mentioned, you know, when you start doing things sometimes, especially, I don't know, if maybe I, I came in a little bit later, but um, even if it was not from the business perspective initially, but when you do eventually start thinking of maybe, you know, monetizing what you do because nobody wants to do anything for free all the time, you know, of course you want to help solve a problem and over time unless it's just passion you sometimes feel like there's a need to get paid for it because there is an outlet to make money from it so as i started blogging it was just it, um, originally it was just me doing it because i was passionate but then many people started coming to me especially artists they wanted us to blog about them or to feature them on something and then i just I, I thought i'm like wow this is a pretty interesting um feel like you know you can actually get paid for this I mean I thought this was only for like countries like Nigerians with big time bloggers you know people are actually reaching out to me to get visibility so initially I was doing it for free for almost three years because I felt like I wanted to build up my reputation and I wanted to build content and I didn't feel like I was in a place where I should be charging people because part of the reason why I was doing it was to give back to our country by you know, providing them with an outlet where they can actually get some exposure. So when I started, I was just doing it for free. But after about three years, maybe around 2016, I thought about it further. And because so many people were not coming with up to us for promo and for, you know, just to be blogged about and just for general things that are related to publicity, we decided that a we will start charging and because we saw a need for it. And for me, I think that if there's a need for something, that means that you're solving a problem. And the problem was people needed more exposure, online exposure, because you know, going to regular radio stations and TV stations were quite expensive. You could not expect an up and coming artist to pay say 50,000 francs every time he went to go appear on a station, but we could charge them say 10,000 francs and we could blog about them, which was a lot cheaper for them. So for me, when I identified that need, then I decided to capitalize on it by creating a formal business. Now, um, for me, creating the business was kind of like a natural instinct because my family, I come from a family where we have very business minded people. And oh, sorry. Sorry. does somebody ask something? Go ahead, Molly. Oh. Yeah, sorry, I thought somebody asked a question. Right, so creating a business for me was not really a, a new thing in terms of like, oh, I had to think so much about it. I felt like it was a little bit natural because I do come from a family where we are, we have very business-minded people. And um, I have seen behind the scenes how like they've run some of their business, even though I didn't have a business of my own. So um, this basically led me to the next phase where um, I decided to sort of register a company that I would work under to be able to provide this, this outlet for people to be able to work with us so that they can get the exposure. And that was when I created the Hot Gen Media.
And the hot gem media was basically meant to be more of a formalized version of what we were already doing so that people can actually see that we mean business. We're not here just to say we do this and we do that. Um, we wanted to set it up the right way because you know, one of the problems we have in the African community is that people don't tend to trust their own people because they feel that we do things secondhand, meaning you have a business, but it's not even registered. You don't even know if these people are certified or you don't know if they have the qualifications. So our first step was to start the business and register it. And then the second step was to get, you know, to get some training, whether it was online training and training by working with other people that have been in the business longer than us to get that, you know, that experience. Even at that time when we were getting a lot of people reaching out to us, we still felt the need to have to learn because it's a learning curve every single day. It's a journey. You can never know it all in one day. You learn as you go. And even now, seven, eight years later, I'm still learning a lot of things because times are changing. You know, the, dig the digital era is changing. Things happen and you have to educate yourself. So that's basically how I got to the point of creating the Hot Gem Media and getting into the blog because I did see a niche, a niche where um, people... I felt that people needed, they needed an outlet for exposure. I felt that Cameroonians are not proud of who they are. They're not proud of the things they have to offer. We would rather listen to foreign music than to listen to our own musicians. We would rather wear foreign brands than to wear our own Cameroonian brands. And so the Hot Gem was there to be able to provide that outlet, not only from a content creation basis, but also from a basis of giving you that, that um, platform to be visible to other people that were interested. Now, one of the things that I wanted also was not only to be a blog, because over the years, so many blogs were created, but it was also the fact that I wanted to use the advantage I had of living in the diaspora and also having connection in Cameroon. And I had to make some sacrifices, obviously, to be able to let people that, you know, if you're going to a blog, I know a lot of Cameroonians abroad, especially some of the artists, and Mrs. BK, BK I'm, not applying, I'm not implying you, but I know there are some artists who are really trying to break into the Cameroonian community in Cameroon and forgetting about the Cameroonians that are out, actually out in the diaspora. And that was one of the areas that I thought we needed to kind of use the gap in. Because at the end of the day, if you're living in Canada or the United States and you're making music, yes, it's great for your people back home to know who you are. But at the end of the day, if you're trying to sell your CDs, the people that have the purchasing power are people that are abroad. So you want to also make sure that you include them. And how can you do that? You're not going to do that by using a blog that is 100% in Cameroon that has no concept of how things work here. You want to also use a blog platform that has connection to the diaspora as well as Cameroon. So that's where we decided to start hiring people that are in Cameroon. I actually do have a content writer now that is in you know, the United States. So they're going to be able to sort of reach out to people here interview business owners, interview people that are actually making things happen so that they can also get exposure in the United States as well as in Cameroon. So that's basically what our concept was when we created the blog. It wasn't just to blog and put out concept, um, to put out content, but it was also to add value to our people by making sure that they have the audience that can actually see what it is that they have to offer. Wow. Beautiful story there. Thank you so much, Mbole Kane. And um, I want to, to applaud you for, for this very great, great journey, which uh, I guess has been very, very fruitful um, for some of us who have been trailing the hot gem over the years. We know exactly um, how much contribution it has made to not only the Cameroonian community, but the, the, the African community as, as, as a whole, just to let you know that the Hot Gem has been winning awards uh, as well. Uh, they've been winning awards, especially of late, and uh, it's, it's a wonderful and very successful project, which I guess um, um, if you haven't come across, you need to go check that out. So it's time for us to, to quiz our second speaker um who uh, does it in the pharmaceutical world yet she also 
does really well in what she describes as her passion, arts, culture, and entertainment. Um, I think I've asked Mole endless questions over the years. We've had uh, conversations on radio, I mean, countless times, and asking her questions here would really be needless. So I would rather um, the participants in this uh, seminar do that. So um, any questions for Mbole Ikani? Who goes first? Um, I see Slim's hand is still raised. Does that mean he is ready for, to go? Yeah, I am. All um, right, Slim, just make it short and straight to the point. Thank you. Okay, yeah, thank you, uh, Ernest. Uh, good, good job, uh, Bonnet. Uh, I, I got to know about Hot Gem in my interactions with uh, Apex, Apex One and with uh, Ernest on this, on this platform. I, I really have not had the time to get into the details of what you do, but your expose has really highlighted the things that I needed to know about what you're doing and your activities. Maybe I should also use this opportunity to say also that besides being a, a business development consultant, I'm also a communication specialist. And one thing that I've noticed with bloggers is we don't have economic bloggers. We don't have business bloggers. Everything is about politics. Everything is about some fake news. Everything is about social people's lives. I really have not really come to understand maybe technically what blogging is all about as and as a businessman, I still haven't understand what network marketing is all about. It's a great debate. Now, you are in the field, you are penetrating on your point the market. You're not only into blogging, but you are also into business. How do you merge these two? Like using your, 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 using your, your blog to create business awareness. Is it a plan or is it something that is actually going on? Bole, can I over to you? The very last piece of it. I'm asking. Okay, okay. How do you merge what you have? Because it's not only a visibility, a parameter, it is also a platform of exposure to promote not only your business, but businesses. Okay, but did you get that? Yes, I did. Sorry, I think there's a little delay from my end. Yeah. Right. Well, the one thing that people, I think the misconception people have about blogging is that it's only, well, it's not really a misconception, but it's the most simplified thing that blogging is about putting out content and, you know, just creating content on a topic. And somebody, um, I think somebody needs to put their phone on mute. <laughs> Thank you. Yes. Um, yeah, so one of the misconceptions people have to begin with is that blogging is just about putting out content. Now, um, yes, it is. That's what it was originally when it just started. It was really talking about topics that you love or topics that you are an expert in. Um, in today's times, blogging has evolved into not just writing. You have different types of blogging. Let me just um, emphasize that. You have blogging for business. You have, uh, you have blogging for passion. And you have, well, I think those are the only two, blogging for business, blogging for passion. Blogging for passion is when you just write about things that you love. If you love fashion, you will talk about fashion just to let people know what you do or what you think about it or just what you know about it. And then you have blogging for business where you can either work in a corporate setting about and blog or you can blog and make money from it. So when we started, it was just strictly for passion. We were just, you know, talking about things we love, entertainment, fashion, lifestyle, and all that. But then when we saw that there's a need to use this 
to help other people in their own way, whether it's not just people, even businesses. I say people because we've worked more with people than we've worked with, say, companies or businesses. We started noticing that there was a need to use blogging platforms or bloggers to be able to create buzz on, on things that are going on. And that's when it becomes a business when you intentionally decide to start making money from what you do as a blogger. Now, the way I leverage blogging is simply by using business strategies, it's not just you know, telling people you're a blogger and you can provide exposure. It involves so many other aspects to it. Blogging is all about communication, content creation. What is it that the person that you're working for wants? Is it for them to um, maybe make more money? It can also be promoting their business or maybe them just being connected to an audience that they don't have to be able to start a sales, you know, like a point of sales where people can actually reach out to them. So for me, what I, what, well, not only me, I'll say my team and I, but I'll just say me because I'm speaking. What we decided to do was take the business aspect. And for those of you who don't really know what bloggers do in terms of like blogging, when they are putting out content, a blogger can actually direct how um, information can be driven. Like for example, if let's say I saw that um, Mr. Ernest Kanjo um, bought a new car, right? He can post on his personal Facebook page that he bought a new car. Fine, all his friends and family will be happy. They'll tell you, hey, that's amazing. But if a blogger wants to put out something negative about that, it's very easy just by the, 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 the content, like by the content that they create. Like I could say, oh, in times of poverty, Mr. Ernest Kanjo is buying a new car, even though we see that his family is not living in, you know, like they're living, they're not living so well. Now, if let's say I was working for somebody who's a competitor to them, and I don't do this, but there are bloggers that do do that, and my goal is to make my client better than him, I would make a comment like that for him to go down, right, to put his image down and get paid for it. So from a business perspective, I think it just depends on what it is you want to gain out of it. You definitely have to consider mark on communication because it's a huge thing. In a way, blogging is also indirectly PR because you're doing public relations in terms of using the platform to put information about people or businesses, either to favor them or to go against them. And it's also a networking, a marketing networking platform where you utilize your networks to market something that you are talking about. And just for the record, for those who don't know, blogging is not just writing articles. You can also blog using videos. And they call that blogging, where you produce videos, content that tells a particular story. So there's so many ways that you can use blogging. And from a perspective, it depends on how you determine to set up yourself. Because many bloggers use their business. They have their own sense of what they want to call as their business perspective when it comes to blogging. And that's why we created the company, as I mentioned to you, because we didn't want to limit it to blogging. The Hajjah Media also does PR. We do communication. We write you know, press releases for people. We can write communication notices for people. We, we can people create content for you. If you have like a website and you need to write, you don't know what to write about and you're not a professional, we can do that for you. So there's a lot in the blogging industry, depending on how you set yourself up. And because we wanted to set ourselves up in a, in a very formalized manner, which gives us the opportunity to do many things. Um, that's why I, I think the hot gem is not really the best example because that's just one of many things we do. We've incorporated our platform to be able to sell ourselves, to be able to provide other services from network marketing, to communication, to public relations. That is interesting. Uh, certainly, your response uh, answers Slim's question, right? So, um, it starts like a passion, uh, but in the course of time, that passion identifies problems and it becomes a solution, just like what Missy was saying earlier on. Um, while Mbole was speaking, I saw Solange, Solange's hand go up. So, Solange, over to you, your question. Oh, hi everyone. Um, hi, Miss Bole, and hi to Miss Constance, Miss Biki. I wanted to ask Miss Biki a question, but um, someone already, the other gentleman already asked the question, so there was no need to repeat it. But I want to tell her that also my presentation was great and inspiring. Same as you, Miss Bole. Mm -hmm. I 
my question for you is, um, by the way, thank you for sharing your story and your experience. And, um, and congratulations for building a, a great platform where, um, you know, you know, Cameroonians, I don't know if you can hear me clearly, but... Um, sure, she can hear you. Okay, awesome. So my question for you actually is that, as um, like you mentioned, why sharing your story? We're talking about, you know, the, it, being, it being hard for, you know, our own people to believe in our own people. You know, for you to sell to your own people, to, to build something that, you know, your own people believe in and they can actually consume the products from your own, uh, your own uh, from your brand. So how did you build this concept of the hot gem to the point where Cameroonians actually really believe in you and they really follow you and they really, in fact, they really believe in your, in your blood, in your blood. How do you, how did you build that thing? That's a great question. Thank you, Solar. So I have to say, and I know this sounds so cliche, passion was a huge part for me because again, um, ever since I started, and, and I know that Mr. Ernest Kanjo can testify that so many blogs have come and gone, like so many blogs that started either before me or started right after me, or even years later after me have not been able to withstand the test of time because a lot of them came with the false idea that when you get into blogging, you will become rich, like Linda Ikeji, who was supposed to be the richest blogger in, in Africa. So they came in with the idea that if I blog, I'm going to make a lot of money, but they did not understand why they were blogging and they did not have a concept of the audience that they were blogging for. They were just doing it because it's like, oh, it's popular, everybody's talking about blogs, I'm going to do it. The reason why I probably, and. It, there's, there's several things, but I'll keep it real short. One, passion. When you have passion, it doesn't matter if you get paid or not, you will still get it done. And I didn't really start making any money. The first dime that I ever received for blogging was in 2016. And it just happened by accident. Even though in my mind, I had already started flirting with the idea of, okay, I see a need for this. I need to start making money. But I hadn't really started reaching out to people and charging. I just happened to have a friend who was like, Bole, you're doing an amazing job. People should pay you for the time it takes for you to create content and put their stuff out there so it's passion number one and then two you have to be very intentional once you pass the stage of passion when you realize that no matter what happens you're going to be able to do this whether you get it or not you need to be intentional about what your next steps were and I was very intentional with the fact that I knew that I love blogging because I love writing I think I took this from my parents they're communicators I feel like I have strong communication skills so this was perfect for me to put my thoughts out there to the public and I was getting pretty good support at the time but then when I decided to turn it into a business, I became intentional and I said to myself, okay, now that I see that people value what I do, I'm going to have to value myself. But before doing that, I need to really make sure that the niche that I'm targeting is the niche that can actually pay me for my services. Now, at the time, I was only blogging 90% about Cameroon, Cameroonian activities, Cameroonian people. And I had to also break that down further as in, do I want to attract Cameroonians in Cameroon or is my target Cameroonians abroad? Two different sets of people, because if you're dealing with Cameroonians only in Cameroon, then you would do things differently. In my mind, I didn't want to limit myself because that was the problem. I noticed that a lot of blogs that were coming up were limiting themselves to say just Cameroonians in Cameroon. I wanted to also be able to target people abroad because not only did I feel like people abroad are doing so much people back home don't even know because we focus so much on Cameroonians only in Cameroon that I felt like I needed to be connected to that audience abroad. But at the same time, there are people in Cameroon that are doing amazing things with the little they have that our people abroad do not even know and they undermine. So I also wanted to have that connection with people back home to link these two people. So th that was the second thing I did. I had to identify my niche which I did. Then the third thing was to put value in what I did. I saw that so many people needed these services, but you know, they're, they, some could not afford, you know, like formal, you know, um, media outlets like TV and the rest. So I kind of jumped on that and I took that opportunity to start setting prices based on just research that I did behind the scenes, which took almost a year. You know, it took me even two years to kind of figure out the rates that I should give to people because I was dealing with two different sets of people across the world. And obviously I can't charge a Cameroonian, say 50,000 francs if they're making 50,000 a month, 
versus another Cameron in the U.S. who makes more. But at the same time, I didn't feel like I wanted to charge people abroad more because it's not their fault that they're abroad. So I think when you are able to set up that structure, which for me was the hardest part, first identifying the people that I really wanted to target and also to identify how I wanted to kind of deal with them from a financial perspective and just stick with it and just be consistent and not give up. I think that was what people really admired because as I was blogging consistently and not stopping, so many people were coming and buzzing and falling off the radar, but we were still standing strong. And the most important thing for me is your interaction with people that do come to you. I made sure that I'm a very, I'm, I'm very professional and I'm very anal. And I see that my content leader, my my country manager from Cameroon, who represents us there, Pure Uvenity, uh, Uvenity, he's online now. He would tell you, I'm all about customer service. Like we're not perfect, we make mistakes, but if we cannot deliver something, we always will apologize, we'll follow up. But when we when you do reach out to us and work with us, we always go above and beyond and we give you a lot more before we even ask for anything. So a lot of times when people interact with us, we don't even talk about money. We start giving you solutions to things that you're looking for because we know that generally we want the best for you. And then we come into the business part. And I think a lot of people actually appreciate that with us. You know, we reach out to people behind the scenes, even if it's not business related, we feature them. We can't feature everyone. We'll have people who will complain that, oh, I do this, but you've never featured me. We're just so few people. We cannot see what everyone is doing. But a lot of times, if you do reach out to us, we want you to tell us your story. We are we, we make sure that we put a lot of effort in making sure that you come out the best way you can. And people can tell that difference. They can tell people that are genuinely passionate about what they do over people that just do it because it's money. Trust me, when you interact with us and interact with other people later on, you will come back and say, wow, you guys were, there's something about you. You were not so into this or so into the money. You didn't push us. You didn't pressure us. Whether you work with us or not, you would tell that we want the best for you. And those are qualities that make us stand out, that make people see us as being relevant. You know, you have to be very careful how you interact with people because your experience with somebody the first time is something that lasts for a long time. You know, and that's one thing that we as Cameroonians don't have. We have very bad customer service, especially when you go back home. People are rude. People don't follow up. People hate feedback. We love feedback. Give us feedback. My, my, my content lead would tell you, we get people emailing us or sending us messages. Oh, hot gem. You know, I noticed you guys blog so much about maybe music from Southwest, can you do more Northwest or Francophone and this and that. We want that feedback. Can we please everyone? No, we can't. However, we always appreciate you when you reach out to us, whether it's negative or bad. As, as long as you're respectful, you will always get a respectful response. So I think that big picture of how we deal with people in general and the fact that we're very consistent, intentional, and passionate helps us to stand out more than a lot of other people because a lot of people either do it for one reason and they lose interest or they lack something which is very noticeable that turns people off so they don't become relevant to those people. So I hope I answered your question. I know I went a little bit detailed, but a lot of that is the people skill, your passion, and you know your professionalism. And that should be the same thing for any business. Professionalism, consistency, and passion, these are the ingredients uh, success. Mbole, thank you so much. And she also mentioned the fact that feedback is very important. Um, in the absence of feedback, communication can cannot become complete, you know. Um, we need to know how we are performing uh, just so we can improve on what we are doing. So that feedback is always necessary. Well, um, we would have loved to continue. This is a wonderful and interesting discussion, but um, unfortunately we have very limited time uh, for, for this activity. As a matter of fact, um, it's supposed to be 60 minutes, but uh, looks like the stories are so interesting that um, we are bound to even go beyond that. Well, uh, maybe as time goes on, we would look at the time allocated for, for this. Um, I, will, I will give room for one more question. This time it will be very short. Uh, she already wrote down her question. So Bola, you will, you will respond in just one minute, six seconds. So um, Noela is in the United Arab Emirates. She writes, what do you think is 
the best strategy is that what well for you to get more traffic to the hot gem. 60 seconds, Molly. Sure. I think you need to be authentic and true to yourself. Write about things that you actually know about and don't make it up. Um, you have, like for you, I think I know I know her. She actually is a beauty blogger and she's very much into um, beauty. Um, someone like you, do what you know. Do your research. Make sure that the information you're putting out there, you can vouch for, you know, because beauty is a very specific area and you don't want to give people the advice that they you know can actually be detrimental to them so just be very intentional about the content you're putting out let people know exactly what it is that you're putting out and you want to put information out there that can also help be, um, help people you know people always thrive off of information that can be positive to them um, that will help you get traffic because if people see that the things that you're provide the information you're putting out there and providing to them is actually beneficial to them trust me they will come back to your page even if it's not beneficial to them always and they think that it will work for someone else they will direct people to your page and just being true to yourself and not getting into situations where um you know like you're not downplaying another colleague's work you can all agree to disagree you know so just be true to yourself be intentional be passionate be consistent and do your research always study your niche study your area of focus and improve on whatever it is you're doing eventually it will become second nature and people will see that you are actually providing positive information that can help them all right so if you are planning on getting into blogging something then uh, you have to understand that um Research aptitude is um, one of the things you could consider. So you have to do a lot of research um, before you go out there writing. Bole, thank you so much. It was um, a wonderful uh, presentation then. Um, we cannot go away we, without two things. First, it's quite important that when we do this, we evaluate ourselves and see where we went wrong. Um, what were the positives and uh, probably the way forward. I think um, it's time for us to do a little bit of evaluation. So we are going to have just two people speak. Tell us your observation, what you observed with this session and where you think that we should improve on. So um, who is opting to do so? Let's give the opportunity to those who haven't spoken yet to do so. so I just want to say, uh, this is Favor. Okay. Um, first of all, what I got out from all the speakers, by the way, wonderful presentations to you all. I really, really do appreciate it. And I'm so glad um, here, Mr. Ennis, thank you for this opportunity. One thing that I realized is that number one, all of them talked about passion, okay? Number one, I saw passion. Um, like you don't just go for something because somebody else is doing it. Something that has to come from your heart. And then number two, they didn't go for the money first because that's one mistake that we always want to do, jump into. Um, how much do I want to gain or get from this uh, uh, project that I'm going out for? We want to first of all find uh, like the problem, trying to solve it um, before you know anything can add, you know, on, on top of it. And so I really want to appreciate the fact that passion is something that drives you into your success, into future success. So I think that's really the two things that, and then um, somebody talked about time management, which is something that I really struggle with too. So I think that's something I'm really, really gonna work on. And so, yeah, I think, I, like I, I observed a lot, but those are just like the, the main points that I took their passion and uh, consistency too. Okay. So Thank yeah, you thank so you. Much, Okay, so is there any uh, other person who had um, an observation as um, as per how the session was run? So how do you think we can do this better? Because we need to improve. Like I said, we are still at the pilot stage of this project. So we need to have ideas so we can, we can do it, you know, in a much more appetizing manner. So any other observation? Okay. So in the absence of um, any final remark, I guess we- I think- Okay. Yes, Mr. Ernest, 
Yes, go ahead. Yeah, uh, I think uh, I, I just about remarked uh, this is actually the first time I am being, uh, I am uh, getting in touch with uh, your people here on uh, this webinar. I think it's, it's very interesting and there is quite a lot that I've been able to learn. The good thing is that uh, being able to mingle with people who have so much insight about what they're doing is very important. And uh, we have been able to really, even though, of course, I, I wasn't talking, but it's more about sharing ideas, which ties a lot with almost everything I do, which is around storytelling. I think we've spoken a lot about that. And I believe that uh, uh, these are initiatives that need to happen a lot more because uh, like I always say, there is a problem which we try to solve every day and it's trying to connect with people who can be of assistance to us. If we have the opportunity to listen to people, to talk with people and to be able to connect with people on, on a regular basis, then I think things are going to be much more better. And uh, what I suggest is that maybe for the next time, like you said, the stories were really so sweet and then maybe we went a little bit above time and stuff. So I feel like if we can be able to schedule a little more on time, so we understand if we think it's cool, we can say, okay, maybe a little more than 60 minutes or maybe two hours and then people can get it and out of it and all that. But I think uh, it's quite a good initiative and there is so much which we've been able to learn. I believe that subsequently there will be more to learn again. Thank you. Wonderful remark, wonderful suggestion taken into consideration. Thank you so much, Jude. All right, so um, any last word? If not, we are going to do the very last thing, then um, we will bid bye to each other. I'm going to share my screen once again, and then we will have this. Okay, let me see. Okay. okay. Can everyone see my screen? Yes. Okay. Yes. Okay. okay. So usually um, at the end of every, every seminar, participants don't go home um, with empty bags. So mm -hmm. um, we, we are not, we, we are not, uh, um, wow. we, we are not physically together in a hall, but we are on a virtual platform. Well, we, we are in a virtual hall. So, we are going to share our certificates virtually. I don't know what that means, but at least uh, just seeing your certificates, um, it's, uh, it's something. Right, so um, we call it Certificate of Participation. So you participated in this second edition of uh, TPW. We want to congratulate you on, on that. So we had Tina Nalova, Tina was, uh, participating uh, from from Canada. Um, we had Atem Akemis in Columbus, Ohio. She was um, present as well. Thank you so much for joining us. Congrats. Maxel Adit was participating uh, from Germany. Maxa, thank you so much. Congrats, you are a pioneer of this. Like I said, we are, we, we are just starting. So everyone who took part in today's edition is, is a pioneer. So we all started this. Solange, thank you so much. Solange is in Boston. She was, um, uh, she happened to have been the very first speaker uh, um, in this, in this uh, project. So Solange, thank you so much for participating the second edition. Um, we had Daniel Asamanto from Douala. Daniel, thank you so much. You were very active as well. Congrats on being a pioneer of TPW. Okay, Grace Dunlady is in Columbus, Ohio. She was present as well. Thank you so much, Grace, and uh, we appreciate your time. Grace Boise is... Uh, um, my general manager of Apex One Radio. Thank you so much, Gracie. Uh, she was here as well. Uh, thank you. Then Slim McArnold was also very active. He is in Douala. McArnold, thank you so much for uh, for being part of this edition of the 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 the, 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 the program. And congrats on being one of the pioneers. Zita was live from Canada as well. 
Zita, thank you so much. Congrats on being a pioneer um, of this initiative. Okay, we had Mbole Kane. Mbole, thank you especially. You were one of the speakers. Um, incidentally, you are one of the pioneers of this as well. So it's gone into the annals of TPW as, uh, you know, Mbole being one of the early speakers. Thank you so much. Missy Biki, we want to thank you so much for accepting to be one of the speakers in today's edition of the, 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 the conversation. And also, congrats on being one of the pioneers. Okay, um, Grace Fever, thank you so much, so much. You were very active as well. Uh, you are a pioneer of this initiative, and hopefully, you will be back uh, in two weeks. Thank you, Leah. Thank you. Uh, Leah was a part of it as well. She's in Canada. Leah, you are a pioneer of this initiative. Thank you so much. Shivonete was as well. She's in Columbus, Ohio. Shivon, thank you so much for joining uh, the program today. Just like Ben Georgiana, who is in Columbus, Ohio. Georgiana, thank you so much. You are a pioneer of this as well. Winstina Teller is in Maryland. Winstina is an actress. She is a philanthropist. Uh, she wears many caps as well. Winstina, thank you so much for being part of this edition of TPW. Then, uh, Berenu Benoit is the content manager of uh, the Hot Gem, whom Boles spoke about uh, several times in her presentation. He is a very brilliant young man. The day he will speak on this platform, you will, you, you, you will, you will agree with me. Thank you so much, uh, uh, Benoit. He is in Douala, Cameroon. Just like Noella Ngang, she is in the United Arab Emirates. Um, I, I don't know what time it should be over there now, but she, she stayed awake just to be part of this. I must appreciate you for, for your time. That is priceless. So thank you so much. Okay, I guess um, whoever hasn't heard their name, well, uh, it is number five. Uh, I, we will, uh, you know, continue to do it that way. So I want to thank everybody for, for joining us today. And it was wonderful. Um, I know it's not easy to, uh, you know, allocate one hour, 30 minutes of your time. I understand everybody has a very busy schedule, but if you can, if you can give out this much time to take part in something like this, then it means that you hold it, you know, in high esteem. I just want to thank you so much. I don't take this for granted. We will be back, God willing, in two weeks. That is June the 18th. Uh, we are working on that once uh, we are ready. We will let everybody know. So once again, thank you so much. And um, uh, may God bless you. Do have a fantastic rest of the day. Thank you. Bye. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Ines. Thanks to everyone. Thank Thanks you, to the speaker. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. This is the beginning of great things. I really appreciate this opportunity. Thank you so much, Mr. Thank you. Yeah. Good night Thank to you. everyone. Thank you, Ines. It was an yeah. awesome uh, initiative. I will want to suggest All the best. that. Uh, yeah. I want to suggest that maybe through NS, if anyone here has anything maybe like this, maybe physically or maybe virtually, maybe through NS, they can inform us so we can participate. Beautiful. I just want to suggest that. Very good idea, yeah. 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 Uh, uh, well, I would also like to suggest something, like why not create a group where we could all be integrated, maybe Facebook group or maybe WhatsApp yeah. group. WhatsApp. Yeah. It's okay. better too, yeah. yeah. Where we appreciate I'm to say that. That's good. That's good. Mm -hmm. I will work on that. Thank you so much. Okay. So, thank you so much. And also, you can always use my platform to share your own initiatives. Please. I'm, I'm very open to that. Thank you so much.